Redditrutide, the new kid on the block when it comes to weight loss peptides. Many of you are familiar with semaglutide, trizipatide, and maybe you've even used something like a tesamorelin for weight loss. Well, Redditrutide right now is taking the cake, not only anecdotally, but in the clinical trials. And not only that, but people have been feeling great on this medication. And today, I want to go ahead and give you all the details that you need to know about this new and fascinating peptide, Redditrutide. So today I want to go ahead and break down what is Redditrutide and how does it compare to these other weight loss peptides? How does it work? What's the proper dosing? What are the side effects? What are the benefits? And what are the contraindications and expectations you should have if you are thinking about using Redditrutide? Now, with that said, Redditrutide is still in clinical trials. With that being said, I know plenty of people out there are still going to go ahead and use them. So as a doctor, I have to tell you, be extremely careful. And I'm not endorsing or telling you to go out and take this medication. This is for information purposes only. So if you decide to use this on your lab rat at home, you can keep your lab rats safe. So first, let's start off by comparing this to two other popular medications, semaglutide, aka Wegovi or Ozempic, and trizipatide, aka Zepbound or Manjaro. These medications have been super popular with celebrities like Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, Charles Barkley, all taking these medications and having great success with them. And before we jump into the mechanism of action, in my clinical practice, anytime I'm using these medications, I do blood work before and usually a really depth in blood work because before you just start trying things out, you want to make sure that these would even help you because you can take all of the weight loss medications in the world, but if your thyroid is messed up, Good luck trying to lose weight. Your thyroid is your body's heat. The more you have, the more hot you are, the more anxious you are, the lower you have, the more cold, constipated, and depressed you are. So all of my patients were doing labs before we just jump into these weight loss medications because they may not be getting to the root of the problem. In my patients, I definitely get your thyroid checked, your hormones, testosterone, estrogen, red, white blood cells, liver, kidney function, and get some cardiometabolic markers, fasting insulin, your CRP, lipoprotein, lipid profile. Maybe even run an ANA to rule out some autoimmune diseases. And on top of that, make sure you get your diet and lifestyle pinned down. Again, good luck losing weight if you're getting four to six hours of sleep a night. Now, with that being said, when we've looked at medications like semaglutide and trizipatide, it's not uncommon for people to lose 15, 20, 25% of their body mass, uh, hopefully mostly fat. And that is one caveat with both those medications, if you don't have your hormones optimized, specifically your testosterone, you can be losing muscle mass, which we definitely do not want. And that's why it seems like when we move to semaglutide to terzipatide, we get less of that muscle loss. And that's because semaglutide is a GLP-1 agonist and terzipatide adds on a GIP agonist. And so by combining those two, most often people experience less muscle mass. And we see that extended even more in reditrutide because reditrutide adds on this glucagon agonist. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what is GLP-1, GIP, glucagon? What is this? Uh, okay, GLP-1 and GIP, once they're hitting our body, they tell our body, hey, we're full, let's slow down digestion and let's absorb in some of this nutrients that we just digested. So then you can imagine if we're injecting this peptide, then that's going to go ahead and give us the same effect whether or not we've eaten or not. And that's why many people, when they take these medications, they get less food noise and they eat less and it adds to their weight loss. And so while that's all great and dandy, one of the cool and exciting things about reditrutide is though it adds this glucagon agonist. Glucagon is a hormone that rises whenever we are fasted and it actually tells our body to burn fat for energy. So not only is it telling us, hey, it's using the GLP-1, it's using the GIP to slow down the digestion and keep us full, but with glucagon, it is actually helping us burn fat for energy. So another benefit that we see with reditrutide is that people often have more energy because one of the side effects we see using with semaglutide and trizipatide is that people often do get a little fatigued, not always, but sometimes. And so one of the benefits that I hear about patients using reditrutide is that they overall actually feel good on the medication. They have energy. They've been able to do more at work. Many of them have decreased their stimulant use, staying away from caffeine or other forms of supplements or nootropics because of that glucagon agonist, it gives them more energy. So to summarize up, Semaglutide is a GLP-1 agonist, trizipatide is GLP-1 plus a GIP agonist, and reditrutide is a GLP-1 GIP 
and glucagon agonists. So an example that I use, it's like semaglutide is a person that comes to me and we're going to start working on our weight loss and we get them running every day. That's definitely going to be helpful. You're definitely going to start going into the direction of your dreams. Trizipatide's like giving you a bicycle. So you're definitely going to get there easier and faster. And then retitrutide is like giving you an e-bike. Now, as of today, the clinical trials for retitrutide are still going on. But to give you kind of a general idea of what doses that they've been using in the clinical trials, most often they're starting low, around a half a milligram to one milligram and slowly building up, usually titrating up every three to four weeks. And this can be doubling or even tripling the dose. So something like half a milligram for a couple weeks, then one milligram for a couple weeks, doing that for a month and then doing two milligrams for a month and then four milligrams for a month. The highest dose that I've seen used in the clinical trials right now is 12 milligrams. Now, as far as biohacking and people who have been using this before the data has come out, before the drug has actually been approved, usually people are starting around a half a milligram to one milligram injected once weekly. Now, a very controversial area about this right now is whether or not you can microdose this. If you followed my content for a while, you know, with testosterone replacement therapy, having a seven to 10 day half-life for most injectable testosterone, I like doing two to three injections of testosterone a week. Now, retitrutide has a six-ish day half-life, similar to the other GLP-1 agonists. So it actually makes sense. Instead of doing one milligram once a week, you could do something like 0.3 milligrams three times a week. There's nuance with this and every person is different. Some people can inject one milligram a week and it does what it's supposed to do. It suppresses their appetite and increases their energy. Some people will peak and trough on that. So it really just depends on how the medication is treating you. I will say a common misconception is if people start on too low of a dose and they're doing like a once a week injection, they're more likely to turn up that dose quicker, going to two, four, six milligrams, just because they don't think it's working. Now, if you microdose it, you're more likely to experience stable levels. In my opinion, in most medications, and again, retitrutide not being FDA approved yet, I would always stay on the safer side of things with a lower amount. And I do that with most medications. Use the lowest amount of the medication to get your desired effect and don't go higher unless you need to. Because anytime you go higher, that usually decreases your sensitivity. And then you have to inject more, which is more likely to cause side effects and also usually cost more money. So most often people are doing one milligram once to twice a week. And expectation wise, I talked earlier, you know, 20, 25%. And this is usually over several months up to a year. And right now in the clinical trials, they're very similar actually to trizipatide, but people have lost depending on where your starting point is, but 20, 25%, I think I saw one upwards is almost 30% body mass loss, which hopefully, you know, that's, let's just say someone is sitting at 300 pounds, 30%, 90 pounds. That's pretty good. And these are things that we really need to consider because there's a risk and reward to everything. This drug is not FDA approved yet, but we also know how bad metabolic disease is on people as we age. And it's extremely difficult. You know, when people get 40, 50, 60 years old, their insulin sensitivity decreases, their habits have been kind of set in. So if you can use a medication to help shake you out of that and lose 20, 30, 40 pounds, what does that do as far as their metabolic health long-term? We don't really know. The data is not there yet, but being a naturopathic doctor, I'd say I'd prefer that you lose weight and feel and move better and have better metabolic markers. So the data that I'm seeing quoted most often is about a 25% weight loss after 48 weeks, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, what are some reasons that we stay away from these GLP-1 agonists, semaglutide and trizipatide, and we can most likely project that onto retitrutide? Medullary thyroid carcinoma, multiple endocrine neoplasia are two of the bigger ones. There were some studies in glutide where some rodents had thyroid issues like C-cell tumors. And most people think that rodents' thyroids are actually different enough than humans that it's not really concerned. And that was shown with glutide, which I haven't really talked about. That was an older one. It doesn't seem like that happens with semaglutide, trizipatide, and retitrutide, but I personally would stay away from it. And with this messing with our digestion, I would tell most people, if you have 
Crohn's, colitis, you're prone to constipation, acid reflux. This can definitely make those things worse. So personally, I wouldn't mess with these. The other thing is if you're diabetic and you're messing with other medications, insulin, metformin, any other thing that can mess with your blood sugar, stacking this on top of it, you should be extremely cautious and hopefully working with a healthcare practitioner because it's going to throw your blood sugar off. Because these slow down your digestion, you should also be mindful of maybe taking your thyroid meds or other medications that are dependent on timing, other things like warfarin and even oral contraception and antibiotics. Now, what are some things that you could take that would help you if you have these fight side effects? Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of ginger, B vitamins, and fiber to keep things kind of moving so you do still get the fullness, but not, you don't get as much as the constipation or delayed gastric emptying. And there you have it, folks. So while Reddit True Tide is extremely exciting and has a ton of promise, again, not FDA approved yet so be very cautious if you go ahead and experiment with this in your rodents and if you have any thoughts or questions on it please leave them in the comments below until next time stay vigilant my friends and god bless